Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Braypath. And in this week's episode, I'll be talking about building trust during a crisis and how transparent communication plays a role in building that trust. In times of crisis, it's said that trust is the currency of leadership. And I think this is entirely true as we think about this digital era that we're in now, in this post-COVID era, where the trust in leaders has never been more important than before. So what we're going to talk about is why trust and transparent communication is so important and what the role of transparent communication is in building that trust during a crisis. So when I'm talking about transparent communication, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this in the context of business and crisis management, and that this is about more than just being honest with your team, with your stakeholders, with your community. It is about being open and timely and proactive with your communication. Transparency helps build trust because of the psychology that goes on behind transparency. Honest and clear, timely, proactive communication helps stakeholders feel more secure, even in an uncertain time. Um, And we have numerous examples going back decades about how uh, trust by companies is built through effective and transparent communication. And I'll give you a couple examples of that as we go along. The opposite of transparent communication, of course, is opaque communication. Um, And this brings consequences. This poor or unclear communication during a crisis leads to a loss of trust, to employee disengagement, and potential reputational damage. Not being honest and transparent about the facts also leads to the issue of sooner or later, the real facts are going to come out, and you know the saying, the cover-up is worse than the crime. That cover-up, that lack of transparency, will come back in a way that really haunts you in your organization. So let's break down the key components of an effective message during a crisis. The first is clarity. You need to be clear about what you're saying. You need to avoid jargon and aim to have a simple, straightforward message. Empathy is another key component of transparent communication. You want to acknowledge the human side of the crisis. And third is actionability, and that is giving people steps, if this is appropriate, on what they can do next. So think about you know an approaching hurricane When it comes to actions, what are the actions that you want the team to take in that situation as a hurricane approaches? It's important to deliver these communications timely and consistently, even where there's no new information. I have found it valuable to say the next update will be sent by and provide a date and time so that folks don't have to guess. They know when that next communication is going to come. And you want to, in a, in, a, in a more acute breaking situation, you want to communicate more um, frequently than if you were not, you know, or, or if you were, um, you want to communicate more um, frequently rather than if you were in a slow burning crisis. So think about the need for almost breaking news like updates as opposed to, well, I can give an update once a day or twice a week because that's the kind of crisis that you're in. But things that are changing frequently, where there's a lot of new developments, you will want to communicate more frequently. It's also important to use multiple channels in this communication. So start thinking about the different communication vehicles that your organization offers. Email, social media, internal messaging platforms like Microsoft Teams or an intranet or SharePoint or Slack or other internal portals that you may have are ways to make sure that your message reaches all of the relevant audiences. And again, social media is important here, whether we're talking about TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, um, uh, the other channels that are out there, Instagram, um, Snapchat, whatever the channels are that your organization is regularly commu- communicating on, you want to ensure that uh, your social media presence is a part of that. Um, social media is the place people go for communication in a crisis because it is uniquely suited for that kind of ongoing communication and updates Um especially for getting real-time updates and building a more public narrative. I will also say, 
and emphasize what you've heard me say before, that video is becoming an even more important way of communicating. Shorts and reels on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok are all valuable ways to get your message out in these short one to three minute uh, sound bites that let you get that kind of short, effective, punchy message out there. Let's talk briefly just about a couple real world examples of this kind of trust and transparent communication. I'll start with one that comes up a lot in crisis management, and that is the Tylenol tampering crisis from 1982. The company here is Johnson & Johnson, um, well-known case study in crisis management. But their transparency and their actions that the company took, they recalled Tylenol um, nationwide, and they communicated very openly with the public about what they knew and what they were doing. They also did this very quickly, helped restore trust and saved the brand. The second is Airbnb. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Airbnb did a great job of communicating transparently with hosts and guests about their refund policy, the company's financial health, the steps that they were taking. This was consistent and empathetic communication that allowed them to maintain trust in a difficult time. So again, in both cases, transparency in communication helped regain control of the narrative and empathetic leadership like this builds strong long-term trust and health both internally with your team, but also externally with your customers and shareholder, uh, <laughs> stakeholders. In terms of preparing leaders for this kind of crisis communication, there's a couple things I would recommend that you look at. Prior to a crisis, it's important to have a strong crisis communications plan in place before a crisis occurs and encourage leaders to practice their communication skills regularly in non-crisis settings, exercises, ways of practicing that, so that when uncertainty hits, when the critical moment hits, they are prepared to react. Be honest, but manage expectations throughout this kind of communication. You don't want to sugarcoat what's going on, but you also don't want to overpromise or commit to too much. Overcommunicate, but don't overwhelm. Send updates regularly, but keep them concise, punchy, factual, with the appropriate level of detail. And then lastly, involve your team. You want to empower your managers and other leaders in the organization to communicate with their teams directly so that they can personalize that component of it, share your key messages, but put it in a way that they know will best work with their team. So to wrap up, again, transparent communication is during a crisis is a great way to build and enhance trust with employees, the client, your clients, and the public. Um, and again, the value of clear, consistent, empathetic messaging is critical to this type of transparent communication. I would give you two calls to action to think about. One is to look at your current crisis communications plans and capabilities and see where transparency can be improved. Um, with these principles of transparent communication. And then, of course, continue to follow us for more insights on leadership, resilience, and crisis management. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.